I was Hany Boy Rico from Street Scores, and man, I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all have already seen it. I feel like I still need to report it, even though I am a little bit late. Unfortunately, I was outside of the house. I wasn't able to record the video when I saw the news because I was right there with y'all. Just as sad, just as shocked as y'all were at 4.45 p.m. when the news dropped on Twitter. But I just got home, so now it's time to talk about it. The Washington Commanders have signed linebacker John Bostic, recently released from the Saints. He's back again. So, of course, we got to dive into what's going on with the linebacker group. How much is John Bostic actually expected to even play? Is he just a depth guy or are they expecting him to come back and be what he basically was the first four weeks last year before he tore his ACL and be like our starting Mike linebacker? He better not. I'm going to go ahead and get that out the way now. But we're going to dive into that and more, of course, because we also got to touch on Ron Rivera's comments about the two new corners that we signed today. Rivera specified which one's going to play outside, which one's going to play inside, and all of that type of stuff. So we're going to dive into all of that. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, when I get back, make sure y'all pull up every Friday for the broadcast podcast. We talk about anime, music, everything in sports, gaming, whatever's funny. We talk about it. And of course, throughout the entire regular season and even into the postseason, I'm speaking into existence. Existence, pull up for the call-in shows after the live game streams that I also do an hour after the games though I hold the call-in show where y'all call in you voice your opinion positive and or negative about the commanders and without further ado let's get it All right, so first of all, let's go in chronological order. How did we get here? When something this tragic, and at least in my opinion, tragic, I'm pretty sure there's probably a handful of people out there that are excited about us bringing back John Bostic rather than trying to go and get like a Jared Davis or even a Donta Hightower, just anybody. My boy AJ Johnson from the Denver Broncos. There's somebody out there excited. But for me, especially if they actually plan on him playing in games for real, even if he's not starting, if he's not just only going to be on the field because somebody got hurt, if he's actually going to be out there even when our linebacker group is fully healthy, it's tragic for me, in my opinion. But this all started when David Mayo and Dejon Harris got released. And first of all, with Dejon Harris, I feel sorry for the whole situation because I believe he even like tweeted out the prayer hands or something about how excited he was to make the 53 man roster and so i'm assuming that they didn't tell him that his position may not be permanent on this team making the 53 man roster the initial one but the chances of him making the final 53 man roster was not very likely i mean i knew that already when i saw his name up there we had five linebackers and only four corners somebody was eventually gonna have to go at some point so i already knew Dejon harris wasn't gonna make the team anyway but the way that he was on twitter i believe it was him i know it was a couple of players that were out there saying thank god and stuff like that and it just sucks because i really hope they relayed the message that yeah you're on the 53 man roster right now but we're not exactly sure if you for real made the team by the time we play the jaguars but back on track david mayo's gone and i was wondering like what's going on three linebackers is a little crazy I mean, you must really, really love your linebackers. And even though we're only going to play two at a time, three linebackers was still very crazy. That was like insane. Even if you have three Hall of Famers at linebacker, and if you're only going to play two of them at a time, only three linebackers on the roster is absolutely crazy. So I knew we were going to have to go out there and get somebody. But of course, like I said earlier, I was hoping like maybe you take a chance on Gerard Davis, who had a lot of talent coming out of college, but it just has not worked out at all for him in the NFL while he's been on the Lions. And then you also have veterans like Donta Hightower. You have like an AJ Johnson. And there's just so many options out there. I mean, even Landon Collins, if you wanted to go that route. And then next thing you know, again, 4.45 p.m., boom. And I'm going to keep saying the time because this is going to be a tragic moment in history as a Brady and Gold fan. August 31, 4.45 p.m., we brought back John Bostic. And so there's obvious positive signs that I can see from Rivera as to why they did this. He's going to be depth, hopefully. Hopefully, he's not starting. And like I said earlier, I don't even want him playing even while we're fully healthy. The only time he should ever touch the field is if there's an injury. I'm hoping even Milo Eifler is above him on the depth chart because at least he comes with some athleticism, some potential, and he played very well this preseason. 
But I was just shocked the fact that we went from David Mayo to John Bostic, two guys that can stop the run, two guys that cannot cover to save their lives. And David Mayo at least has been here all offseason. John Bostic was here last year. But remember when he was here, this wasn't a great defense. Those first four weeks were terrible, and he was one of the main culprits for it. We were like bottom five in DVOA on defense when he was here. And that was when our third down defense was atrocious. And you know the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result and if we're bringing back john bostic other than landon collins right now this is the same defense that was terrible those first four weeks the exact same defense now granted a lot of guys have improved and i'm expecting benjamin st juice to contribute quite a bit because he was hurt at that point also percy butler Derek forrest in the rotation for darian mathis should help a lot and jamin davis has gotten way better from what i've already seen just in preseason but still at the end of the day it's basically the same defense for the most part minus chase young you're literally just taking away Chase Young and adding John Bostic and a little bit of Benjamin St. Juice. That's the only personnel difference. So that's scary, man. But, I mean, again, the only kind of silver lining that you can think of is the fact that he does know the defense. But, again, David mayo has been here all offseason. He knows the defense as well. So I don't know why we felt like John Bostic was worth switching out for David Mayo. Like, I would understand maybe if John Bostic was already on the team and then we were like, we don't need a David Mayo. But to cut David Mayo for John Bostic shows me that you feel like John Bostic is an obvious upgrade and I just don't necessarily see it I think they're both a huge liability on the field even on run plays because if they're showing the run and then they actually decide to throw it or even if the running back gets outside neither of those neither of those guys have the speed to catch up to him also another silver lining I'm trying to think of as many positive things as possible y'all know I'm Mr. Optimistic but I mean he knows the defense uh he has a pulse he's legally allowed to play football he's a veteran I, I don't he's a human I I'm I'm digging I'm digging I'm sorry I'm digging but remember he was here from 2019 to 2021 remember he tore his acl against the falcons and he was playing poorly in that game even before he got hurt missing tackles not covering people and then he ended up on the saints last year and then he was cut by the saints recently and now he's back here and john com even said that bostic was one of the two names he heard often this offseason as a possible vet backup if anything were to happen and so something happened david mayo and dejon harris got cut john bostic brought in and then in positive news rivera spoke on the two corners that we signed he said that his concern about the new corners that they just signed today technically that they claimed off waivers is their ability to learn quickly and catch up because we're bringing these guys in with less than two weeks before week one and I'm assuming at least one or maybe even both of these guys are going to be higher than Christian Holmes on a depth chart. So first of all, corners just play in a rotation anyway. One of these guys that we signed today is going to play against the Jaguars, even if it's only for a little bit. We getting like a dime package or whatever. But then if there's an injury, we're one injury away from one of these guys starting potentially. And so again, it, it's kind of scary. The linebacker group really scary when you add John Bostic to it I don't like the depth at all I really like Milo Eifler but after that I'm concerned we only have four linebackers and one of them is John Bostic who's probably higher on the depth chart than a Milo Eifler sadly but then the corners again we have three starters but if either of them gets hurt and all three of them have fairly extensive injury histories. Benjamin St. Juice missed most of last year. William Jackson has missed games here and there since we got him. And Kendall Fuller is known to miss games occasionally as well. We are one injury away from one of these guys that we signed today started. And again, Ron Rivera's main concern with them is how fast to be able to learn and pick up everything that's going on with the defense. I mean, they have no chemistry with the other corners and safeties, the linebackers. Jack DeRio doesn't exactly know how to utilize them yet as far as their weaknesses and strengths and things like that. I mean, all of that is going to have to be learned and adjusted and game plan for on the fly in regular season games that count for wins and losses that's scary but Ron Rivera did emphasize that Rashad Wild Goose is going to play inside and outside but probably more so inside and Tariq Castro Fields is basically just an outside guy like what he did from the Jets and shouts out to Martin Mayhew I mean not exactly how great of a job he's done overall but he took the time to call the Jets head coach Robert Sala and ask about the player and he said that to 
Tariq has a very high IQ and he's learning. And like I spoke about earlier in the video where I break down their weaknesses and strengths and why we signed them, the 49ers wanted to bring him back. We just had a higher waiver priority than the 49ers, so we were able to steal him away from those guys. That's kind of a crazy conversation. Like, hey, we stole your player that you wanted to make your practice squad. We actually brought him onto our 53-man roster. How should we use him type of thing? That's a weird conversation. But shout out to Marty Mayhew for reaching out and Robert Sala for actually answering this question, apparently. Also, since I've been gone, since the last time I talked about them in the video where we signed them just a few hours ago, I watched a little bit more tape on them. And really the biggest things with Tariq is that of course he's very raw and like i already said he tends to put his hands on people a little too much kind of has that benjamin st juice in him a little bit a little bit of holding and stuff like that and then of course again he's very very raw i mean he's a rookie he's a sixth round rookie this is his first chance in the nfl and there's still a lot to learn but he's an athletic freak with crazy potential but he's gonna have to hurry up and catch up and learn this defense learn what jack the expects of him again gain chemistry with all of the guys around him the secondary the corners the safeties the linebackers in front of him what the defensive line is doing as far as run fits it's a lot of stuff he's gonna have to cram in within this less than two weeks away from when we play the Jaguars next Sunday. So man, I'm rooting for them. I really hope they do well because I feel like how well they play is going to factor in how many games we win this season. Again, we're one injury away from one of those guys starting and it's probably Tariq or Wild Goose being thrown out there as a permanent starter until that guy comes back healthy. And then lastly, before we get up out of here, Martin Mayhew said a lot of interesting things in his press conference, but of course he said something about Armani Rogers and he said that the way Armani Rogers stepped up despite still learning the tight end position was impressive. He said, quote, I can't say enough about this kid, unquote, for the mental toughness he has shown in camp. Hey man, any Armani Rogers compliments from the head coach, from the GM, all of these guys, from the director of pro scouting like I discussed earlier, I'm reporting it. We're going to talk about it. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Of course, let me know how you feel about this John Bostic situation. Do you feel like we're still going to add another linebacker or do you feel like that's just done? We're going in with these four against the Jaguars and we'll see what happens. I hope not. It would be nice to still bring in another guy, even if you got to go and get a Landon Collins and technically make him a linebacker, anything but what we got in John Bostic, please, in my opinion. But of course, let me know y'all's opinions in the comments. And then also, please leave a like on this video if you like to even learn anything and of course i appreciate all of the support man shout out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out